hear me? Yeah, I think I hear you loud and clear, actually. How about that? The Good. technology of uh, 2020. <laughs> All right. Well, so thanks and welcome to Coffee Box. And, Thank you. Uh, here we have Itchy uh, from Café Circular. And do you want to introduce yourself a little bit and say a little bit about the roastery? Uh, well, let's start the other way around. It's, uh, I believe that uh, uh, you mentioned roastery. I think that uh, we're not a roastery uh, or, or a roaster only. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, when we start, when we, when we set out to uh, join the coffee uh, world back in, basically dates back to 1998. And uh, it's uh, from our previous work in a, a UN-related um, agency. Uh, so that's where we have our roots. We uh, found out that uh, trading coffee was not the uh, always the most uh, sustainable one. And uh, we set out to try to uh, see if we can do something about it. And this was this dates back to about 2007 or eight. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe in 2010, we acquired a roaster to be able to uh, uh, obtain and uh, roast some coffee that we managed to uh, uh, acquire from our friends, specifically in Kenya. That's where the uh, headquarters of uh, uh, the United Nations Environment Program is located. Mm -hmm. So that's about a bit brief about our our origin. So I wouldn't say that we are a roaster. I think we are, of course, because that a, provides a means of a, a outlet or a mirror for what you can do with a uh, with, with, with a with, with coffee. But mm -hmm. uh, I also believe that we have worked very uh, hard on uh, setting up specific frameworks for how trade in coffee is where, well, hopefully is supposed to be uh, conducted. Back in 2009, I believe that we uh, established some, something we call transparency trade, also mm -hmm. transparency pricing, and a means of transparency in uh, quality or grading as well. So I think those are the three pillars that we have uh, based our uh, foundation on, and I think it's quite valid in in uh, in, in um, the years to come as well. Uh, so that's a little bit about us, and uh, just short about myself. My name is uh, Ivica Svetanovsky. Uh, my origin, or my parents' origin, is Macedonia. I'm born and raised in Sweden. I was working in Norway for quite a bit of a while. And that's also my connection with the coffee. And I'm, I'm one of the founders of Coffee Circular, which in short means a coffee circle in, in Latin. So that was our approach for how we wanted to gather people with different competencies within specific fields to be able to acquire uh, knowledge within a compartment in, the, in the, uh, each part of the coffee value chain, that is. How is your time? What do you spend most of your time doing these days? Or how's your time split up between different jobs and tasks? And uh, well, I believe that logistics is is one major part of mm -hmm. the of the, if you will, the coffee value chain. Uh, roasting mm -hmm. specifically, I just want to highlight or pinpoint the fact that it's not that we are not roasting coffee. Roasting is just just a few percent of what you have to, in yeah. a way, do. Uh, so. Uh, uh, and it's quite important that you do that as well, of course, to gain knowledge about specific coffees, varieties, and so on and so on. Uh, however, we truly believe that there's so much work to be to be done in all uh, stages of, of uh, each part where the coffee is basically traveling from, from everything ranging from um, uh, growing, nurturing, uh, pruning, uh, uh, harvesting, processing, uh, logistics, then comes roasting, distribution, and so on and so on. So I, I would say that logistics is a major part. Uh, mm -hmm. Then, of course, also comes the, comes the fact that, you know, there's um, uh, sales and so on. If you want to do, really do want to sell some of your products as well. Yeah. A bit of marketing, 
uh, truly believe that, you know, logistics, figuring out how to, 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 um, uh, to do that in a very efficient way is very, uh, and optimal, uh, way. Yeah. I think that, you know, engulfs a large bit of my time at least. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, let's get into the coffees. Would you like to introduce them? We can start maybe with, well, uh, do you have a favorite between these two? Um, well, you know, it's difficult to, to pick any favorites. I mean, it's <laughs> not, pick a favorite it's, child? it's, yeah, more or less. Um, you know, I, I, I do want to say that, um, our, uh, focus at least is, uh, natural process coffees and what mm -hmm. you can achieve with natural processes. So I think it, uh, fares quite well to maybe start off with the, with the Ethiopian, uh, selection. Okay. Um, this is a copy from the Gedeb region. There you mm -hmm. go. Thank you. And uh, we set out to, uh, in short, to um, uh, extend the uh, the drying uh, for five additional more days and see what we can achieve if we would if we would do that. So I think it renders a um, a coffee that is more a bit more harmonious. It. Mm -hmm. uh, gives a bit of a sensation where you can have um, a less, call it fermented uh, sensation. It's overall a very, um, when you brew it at least, it's a, it's a very, um, it, it leans leans towards a um, uh, classic Yirga uh, Chef. However, mm -hmm. it does have a bit of modernism in, uh, in it as well. Um, a very silky, at least what we get here, and I also would, would like to uh, highlight the fact that we um, we recommend that uh, brewers, regardless of uh, if it's in a coffee shop or or at home, that you try to use a uh, low mineral uh, water, mm -hmm. low TDS. Personally, uh, we have uh, we're using a uh, 10 TDS water, which is basically a you know, straight out of the tap. So uh, it renders the cup to be quite uh, um, structured. Um, it's transparent in the flavors um, uh, with those specific Ethiopian um, uh, characteristics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I tasted it, the first, it was, it sort of reminded me, oh yeah, this is what an Ethiopian, I feel it's been, uh, well, I've had quite a few Ethiopians recently, but one that was sort of really bright in taste and sort of strong as Ethiopian vibes. I felt it was really. Yeah, that's uh, that's that. that's good to hear. I think that's what that's what we set out to do as well, and also with the uh, roasting algorithm that we uh, that that we applied to to this coffee as uh, as well, just to mm -hmm. highlight those specific uh, sp specifics. Uh, I believe it yeah. turned out quite well uh, when when consider considering considering. Uh, actually, uh, Yirga Chef has a very broad um, properties, what you can, in a way, uh, do with it. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, um, I would say, always striving for highlighting the acidity in, in the coffee. Uh, but yet again, for this time, it's not, um, we also learned throughout the years, of course, that acidity is not perhaps always the focus for specific uh uh, brewers, but that that's at least our uh, uh, approach. But we, in a way, slightly toned it down. In for for you, this is a cap box um, uh, exclusive, so mm -hmm. I think it really renders a harmonious or balanced cup, if, uh, yeah. if you will. And when people are drinking it, then what would you what should they look for in the flavor? I think in the flavor, they should definitely look for those typical uh, typical Ethiopian notes. We are highlighting uh, fruits and berries. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a lot of apricots in this uh, in this coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, hint of bergamot, but when, when I believe that when people are referring to bergamot in a coffee, it's not it, it's not scented or it's not as the real real bergamot mm -hmm. because the real, if you will, when I say real ber bergamot is um, is like um, uh, 50, 50 citrus, 50, 50 orange peel. When you really smell, a, if you will, a real bergamot. So, um, uh, there is a, a sense of jasmine in there, but a lot of, uh, butterscotches as well. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, acidity is uh, some at some point at some um, stages in the brewing. I, I can I can sense um, lime um, uh, yep. and also a hint of orange uh, as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it would just be interesting to to um, uh, uh, to hear what other people might be might find in this coffee as well. We do mm-hmm. calibrate these coffees with our uh, with our established recipe. We use 20 grams of coffee for 300 grams of water, mm-hmm. and uh, it's brewed in um, with three pours, 100 grams three times each, uh, which we developed for one of the um, uh, a world uh, Brewers Cup uh, competitions a few years back. And, so you have a, uh, a 100 gram. Um, in other words, escaping me. Uh, blooming or yeah, sorry. Yes, 100 <laughs> gram bloom in that recipe. Uh, well, actually, uh, blooming is also one of those things that you necessarily don't have to bloom, uh, if you will, our coffees because that's mm-hmm. in a way embedded in the in the roasting. So uh, you don't need any particular resting time. You just uh, open up the bag and brew immediately, if mm-hmm. you will. So it might uh, feel like a 100 gram uh, bloom, but uh, I, I, when you when you pour the first 100 grams, that's focusing. You're you're um, targeting the acidity. So, mm-hmm. you know, you're literally extracting uh, a large proportion of the acidity, what the coffee can, can offer you. And then when you, um, uh, when you uh, proceed to brewing the uh, additional 100 grams, uh, that's extracting a large part of the sweetness. And then the last 100 grams, you focus on... Um, basically balancing the acidity and the sweetness and that's where you create the texture and uh, or generate the texture uh, structure in in the coffee so i would highly recommend that people try this of course it's not a prerequisite that you really have to have to brew it this way um and uh, it, it's a very scalable recipe. You can mm-hmm. just add one gram of extra coffee and see what that does. You can remove one extra gram of coffee, basically going from 20 to 19 and respectively 20 to, to 21 mm-hmm. and see the effect on, on the coffee. Basically, the only thing you, you would have to adjust is your, uh, is your grind. And you can also try to um, uh, try with different water temperatures as well. I personally uh, recommend 93 and above, up to 95. Yeah. Uh, for for this particular um, uh, coffee and roast, I would I would at least stay within 95 to 95, depending on the kettle and so on, and you to ensure that you really get 95 degrees out of your kettle uh, upon pouring. That is. Mm-hmm. And that's and the of course it's also write... available on sorry on the on your bag. That's the one you're this one. Yeah, exactly. So if you exactly. want the written down, you got it on the bag there. Yeah, uh, we were definitely striving for simplicity in this recipe, and as mentioned before, it's highly scalable. You can um, you can apply it in for 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 even fifteen grams of uh, of coffee, and then you scale uh, relatively towards that as well, which means two hundred twenty five grams of water, um, and also also going up or higher yeah. concentration at least cool and about the panama coffee would you like to talk about it uh yes actually uh, yes certainly the uh, coffee from panama this year and also uh, it, it it um it arrives from uh, uh the altieri family uh and uh, this particular one is a uh, best of panama lot exclusively for uh for you and um uh what we initially set out to to do was uh to actually acquire uh a couple of uh, geishas from the altieri uh, family because they've been working quite hard on uh, various processes the, this year mm-hmm. and uh, uh obviously a um 
uh, a geisha offering would be uh, quite a bit more uh, pricey. However, we did find that 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 their uh, typica offering was uh, was um, to use the word fantastic, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, it um, it's quite high in it's very high, I would have to say, in in sweetness uh, when applying, if you will, our uh, recipe. That is uh, very enjoyable um, and. Uh, the beauty of when working uh, very or extremely close with a, with a coffee producing family is the fact that you can uh, acquire specific lots and also understand what what a specific farm with specific trees and how they're performing in respect and what they actually uh, what they what they give so so to speak mm-hmm. uh, and also with the various processing uh, as well. Uh, so, for example, for the geisha, the Altieri family, they did a uh, cold fermentation. They did a, 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 a very slow uh, fermentation as well. They also have the, the, the various uh, conventional, if you will, geishas as well. But also mm-hmm. the the this particular one, the um, the washed uh, conventional, if you will, washed uh, yeah. process to really see how how, how the, um, uh, to be a bit philosophical about it, what actually happens with, with, uh, with, uh, very, with specific varieties with, with the uh, fermentation, regardless if it's a washed, washed um, uh, conventional natural or call it um, a modern nat- natural. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I'm really happy that we're able to bring this out to, um, a lot of uh, uh, people to your uh, peers, to your customers, mm-hmm. um, and uh, uh, let's see what people uh, people uh, uh, how people find it. Yeah, it's. I feel it, it's uh, uh, drinking it beside this one. It doesn't do it justice. Of sort of uh, this one is so loud in the mouth, and this one is sort of quiet and subtle, sort of like. Uh, while well, you're if you're sort of con- comparing it to a uh, geisha that's sort of subtle and sweet and but yeah so i'm interested to hear uh how people receive it and it is definitely a bit more um as you say um uh subtle uh mm-hmm. to also use the word maybe elegant uh mm-hmm. somewhere but also i, I believe that that uh, um a uh, bit of subtleness adds to uh, to that specific um, sensation that this coffee uh, definitely uh, gives. Yeah. Or flavor provides. notes. That's flavor notes for this one, for. at least what we found uh, here. Um, or actually, our our procedure for checking the uh, um, and setting the flavor notes is actually that we are um, an international team that is evaluating the uh, the coffee, and uh, so that's the best way to, in our perception, to to make sure that that that, that the flavor notes are there. So we have people who are uh, brewing the the coffee, cupping the coffee, um, a bit here and there in the world, and. Mm-hmm. For each category, for uh, aroma, flavor, aftertaste, um, acidity, body, and uh, overall balance, um, the um, the three most common flavor notes are the ones that you would find on the specific uh, bag or the, the actual label. Yep. So uh, we found um, a high amount uh, of um, uh, anise, um, hibiscus, and and uh, black beer, or at least dark berries in, yep. in the aroma. Um, and, uh, that also in a way translates to some of the, of the, uh, of the geishas from the Altieri uh, family as well. Uh, the flavor is, um, that elegance we were talking about that, I think its origin is from, uh, um, uh, um, uh, some, some tea notes that we found and specifically the chamomile, uh, mm-hmm. chamomile tea, uh, a lot of light honey. In this one uh, as well, and the blackberries are are still present in the uh, in the flavor. 
partially in the um, in the um, uh, in the aftertaste uh, as well. Uh, and we did have uh, two of us, I believe. We we, we had a sense of um, uh, banana or banana peel, but meant in a good way, not in mm -hmm. you know that specific you know uh, green banana yeah. specific. But you know mm -hmm. that 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 it, it gives um, it, it gives uh, some means of uh, hints to, towards uh, towards that. Yeah. Uh, some bit of nuts in the um, in the aftertaste. Uh, Almond, some would say maybe marzipan, but almond we, we found as well. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, citric tangerine like, uh, um, or even even a malic acidity is, uh, is to, be, to be found. Mm -hmm. uh, those are, I believe, the, 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 the grand uh, notes for this coffee. So, uh, uh, and interesting to, to learn what other people find as well, of course, and you as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think I can, it has, I feel it has sort of a, uh, a tiny bit of a, a sweet tart aftertaste, which when you mentioned a little bit green banana, I sort of, that sort of sparked a, a note there and, and the tea, I would go for that. Some sort of a chamomile. Yeah. And the, certainly a sort of like an orange. These will also, of course, develop over time, and mm -hmm. uh, so so some, uh, of course, might some other flavors might uh, be um, uh, introduced uh, or a sensation of something else, of course. Uh, since this was actually brought in in a, I would say, in a haste because the mm -hmm. uh, the, um, uh, the the coffee. Uh, this coffee, uh, we didn't have particular, uh, time to evaluate over time. So of course, if someone might find uh, something else, that's totally legitimate. This is what yeah. we found basically two, two and a half something, uh, weeks ago. Uh, so, uh, uh, I would not be thrown off, uh, if, if, so, if some of these flavors are specifically, um, uh, uh, not to use the word fade or, or so, but if something else is introduced mm -hmm. or if yeah, there's something bit. else that's a bit more, yeah, if there's something a bit bit more dominant, uh, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm um, uh, really happy that we were, we were able to, to bring this uh, uh, coffee to, um, to everyone. And uh, uh, we, it, it was a bit, bit of a sh short... Uh, short time on this one for sure but i think we uh, i truly believe we did a uh, did uh, work together on it in a in mm -hmm. a nice uh, nice way and uh, i believe it also proves and also um uh showcases our diligence to uh, to work close uh, as close as it can get actually if uh, uh meant in a good way uh, mm -hmm. to 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 bring coffees directly from from the farm uh to uh to everyone you worked a lot with this family or how did you uh find this particular coffee uh worked with uh, actually uh i i named this coffee uh gene because that is the uh, uh father or the found founder of the the farm uh and uh and the company as well uh, eugene mm -hmm. uh, altieri and uh, it must have been about one and a half or two, or two years ago that uh, that uh, Gene, as a matter of fact, he contacted me and he heard about us and uh, our approach that we have with uh, our coffees and, and trade and so on. So we brought in a um, pure natural geisha that we've had for some time now. Uh, we call it Lily based on lily of the valley very floral one um and uh subsequently other coffees uh, as well that are that we um that we're looking into and also uh hopefully we'll be able to do some processing uh and development together in, in the future uh with uh, with the family mm -hmm. great and would you recommend starting uh with the same brew recipe that you have uh, on the bag is that your go-to uh, 
brew recipe we, you start uh, with? Uh, that's uh, as a matter of fact, that's what we uh, what's done on a uh, more or less uh, daily basis um, because uh, it is a relatively, if you will, uh, fast uh, fast recipe to mm -hmm. get a grip a grip on, yep. uh, and uh, it produces a um, uh, it produces a really um, um, to use the word good cup of coffee it's very superficial yep. to say good of course it, mm -hmm. it, it, it uh, it's only the nature of what what you want to achieve of course but we yep. i mean you can use uh, uh tetsu's recipe you can use any recipe on on these uh on these coffees absolutely that's our yep. way to uh have a um, internally at least a standardized way of of assessing the 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 coffees um, and also, if you want to highlight the uh, highlight uh, acidity uh, a bit more than uh, than, than perhaps in, in a different uh, recipe, whether one 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 um, chooses to um, uh, go with a go with the washed one or the the natural one here, uh, we do have a tendency since we've worked together with you since two thousand thirteen or fourteen, <laughs> I, I believe that yep. we uh, ship. Um, uh, more natural uh, processed coffees than 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 washed ones. Uh, this year, we we figured out that well, let's let's balance it out a, a little bit, so uh, so people can have uh, both. Yeah, I think when you mentioned that, I think you were maybe the, one of the the third roaster we used when we started up after you'd won the Nordic Roasting Championship in. Uh, 14, 13, yeah. 14, 14, yeah, around there Probably somewhere. 14. Yeah, I. Mm, so <laughs> that, that, that's coming pretty, around. That's uh, I'm actually laughing about the fact that uh, uh, or smiling internally more, more that uh, I remember your phone call um, uh, those years ago, really, and uh, it sounded like, yeah, would you be able to, you know. Um, uh, make a few bags for us, you know, we are let's, let, let's do something, uh, you know, and we did, I think it mm. was about, uh, um, a couple of kilos, if you will, uh, only. And, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, stunningly and interestingly, it's, it's, um, how you've, uh, you know, developed, uh, coffee box to what it is, uh, to today. It's really been, uh, enjoyable to be, uh, to be part of, uh, that right for, for sure mm -hmm. so Great. uh it's uh yeah brought back some memories now really mm -hmm. thanks <laughs> all right yeah. so if uh, people want to learn more about what you're up to as for sort of the projects you're got going on where should they head for more information uh i think uh, we're quite conventional in what we're we're doing and call it uh, classy so i think uh, oh, you would find more information on our uh, uh web uh, that is we do post some some sometimes <laughs> once mm -hmm. in a while uh on on instagram uh we do tend to post uh things that we find are you know uh um important uh mm -hmm. um so uh but obviously it has a very um uh, dense format so if you want to learn more and what we do uh, uh the web is obviously the the, uh, the best way uh, in respect to articles we post um uh so-called brewer profiles we you know, what how people brew and uh, what they, what to do how how we can help the uh, how uh, with, with brewing we post uh, about our uh, processing projects. We just concluded one in um, uh, Kenya now as well. We isolated a uh, the the Batian variety that we have followed since basically 2009 or 10 specifically. Uh, we think that this is the first time that someone has done it, Batian only in Kenya, yeah. since uh, we we started to understand in a very uh, early stage on that. Uh, just to keep it short, uh, at least to to um, uh, that a lot of farmers in in Kenya are uh, giving up their farms because of it's not profitable to uh, to grow uh, and harvest coffee anymore. 
Um, and uh, so that's one factor that is important. And the second one is, of course, that there is no incentive anymore for uh, for, for farmers to, to be in coffee anymore. So why should I do it? So it's a twofold project, this to um, uh, our project in Kenya, to be able for people to understand better what they can achieve with a natural process and also with the variety that's on the rise. Because mm -hmm. as you might have seen, there are so many uh, coffees um, or originating from Kenya now that has attached the, uh, the Batian variety. It usually can say SL something, yeah. uh, Ruiru, and uh, then obviously you would have uh, Batian. So it's, it's being introduced more and uh, more and more. Uh, but not, not as a uh, single isolated variety. Uh, and this is the, the variety is, uh, is um, more optimal for um, farmers who have given up their SL trees because of they're dated and they don't give uh, the yield is not there anymore for a lot of, uh, a lot of them. Uh, so it's you know easier to swap out to something new that is uh, th that's more favorable in respect to uh, um, uh, coffee berry disease and leaf rust and so on. It's more resilient uh, than the Batian. Sorry, the Batian is more resilient. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yield similar. Uh, similar could even be uh, be more, but mm -hmm. it also has to do with the age of the trees as well, of course. Yeah. Uh, so there's a couple of other factors that are um, uh, that are important to to look at as well. Yeah. So we were fortunate enough to uh, work with a close friend, uh, Macho, his name is, in, in Meru, to be able to uh, uh, select the cherries from, uh, from a couple uh, of trees and able to um, uh, process, process them according to a, a protocol that is uh, dedicated for taking a look at how uh, the temperatures uh, and also the environment, uh, atmosphere in general, is is in uh, in its uh, uh, in the region. Um, so these are the kind of uh, projects that are uh, very interesting and and very uh, important for for us specifically. So the web, uh, that's the website here, coffeecircular.com. Yeah, yeah. Also put a link. Here. For it great very good very well thanks good. for uh having your coffees with us and uh well, thanks for having them what people say thanks